Hi guys, good morning and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in today's video, I will be discussing what I thought of the awesome and very, very good, uh, I guess I would call it a spin-off prequel. Yes, the spin-off prequel to the hit Netflix show Kingdom. This special dropped today on Netflix called Kingdom Ashen of the North, and it was great. I just got done watching it and really enjoyed it. Now, before I go on, of course, please be warned, if you're not caught up on the show Kingdom by its most recent season, season two, or if you would like to watch Kingdom Ashen of the North and you haven't yet, uh, do not keep watching or listening to this video as I will be going into a lots and lots of spoilers, plot details, and stuff like that. So you have been warned this is going to be a spoiler-filled review like most of my review videos. So you have been warned. That being said, let's uh, jump right into it. So first and foremost, there were a couple of things that were confusing me at first when the as the show went along because I was like, how come, uh, you know, how come the... Uh, uh, Jurchians, or um, I think that was what they were, the Jurchians never attacked the military base once they suspected or knew that it was actually that nasty lord and his men who killed uh, their brothers and not some zombie tiger. I mean, coincidentally, the zombie tiger was an awesome addition, as was the zombie deer. But then, you know, as the story went along and it was revealed, oh, they pinned it on her father, and that's why they attacked the Boundary Village. Because as the attack on the Boundary Village was occurring, I thought to myself, what the hell? These people had nothing to do with the death of those guys in the woods. Oh, but then as the story went along, everything clicked together. So basically, everything started to make much more sense towards the big climactic ending, which was when the little mini outbreak occurred in the military base. And then good on Ashen for being courteous and thoughtful enough to clean up after her own mess, because as soon as... um every soldier in that uh, base or that fort had become infected she basically set all of the zombies ablaze like she wasn't going to leave the place just unattended and let a bunch of zombies loose outside of that base so that was courteous of her I thought that was good of her and then I was a little confused at first because I was like oh did they rebuild her village during the time jump when she transitioned from little girl to young woman but then it was like, oh no, this is just how she remembers her family and friends in the village. And she kept them all as zombies. And then we see, even as the show gets towards the end, when she is talking about the resurrection plant and how it works, to the king's physician, the very guy who would treat the king in the first season of Kingdom, he got this resurrection plant from her and she explained to him how it works but she didn't mention the zombie side effects of it so and of course she did that intentionally because she sounds absolutely de determined to eradicate any and all life that's around her or at least within the immediate region of where she is or presiding whether it's korea or japan or any other province like that so i was like oh son of a bitch because i and i saw the guy it said physician lee i'm like that's the king's doctor. This is where he got the resurrection flower from her. Oh my God. She set everything in motion for the first two seasons of Kingdom. So I was like, oh my God, how about that? This was a great uh, prequel spinoff. You know, even without the zombie aspect or element to it, it was still a pretty interesting good revenge story, if you think about it. Like, even if she had just killed off all the soldiers just by herself or systematically within the fort without the aid of zombies, it would still made for a pretty good entertaining revenge story, revenge thriller story. I mean, obviously, we knew this was going to have zombies in it because this is off of the Kingdom franchise. But still, it was still quite an entertaining story, even without zombies, which just goes to show you how good and engaging the story was even before the zombies entered the picture in the third and final act of the show. So it was quite entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed this very, very much. And I loved how it all came together and all the pieces fit together and all the gaps were filled as the show went along, especially towards 
controversy end there with the reveal that she gave the king's physician the resurrection plant. You know, she kept all of her family members and fellow villagers alive, but as a little kid, putting the resurrection plant inside their foreheads and then feeding the commander of the base to her uh, zombie fellow zombie villagers. Yikes. I also liked how she seemingly spared the one officer when she shot him. Granted, she shot him right in the forehead with an arrow right as he and that other guy were trying to escape by lifting the door bar up. I think she did that as more of an act of courtesy or mercy because she didn't want to see him ripped, painfully ripped apart and eaten to death because he semi looked out for her, even though he didn't really take much action until after the fact when he warned that creepy rapist soldier to leave her alone like he did after the fact. But still, he must have been one of the few soldiers that was pretty good to her when she was living there as a little girl. But, um, you know, it was still kind of sad to see him go. And um, I also understand why the soldiers would implicate her village in order to avoid a full-out war or civil war within their country. I understand it. I don't agree with it, nor do I approve of it, because that entire village was completely slaughtered for no good reason. But I do get it. But it also added fuel to the fire, in this case the fire being Ashen's drive for vengeance to avenge her family. I also like how they revealed that her father was indeed alive this whole time and uh, they showed his death on screen to us because I thought, gosh, they're going to kill her father off screen? That seems kind of odd, to, for, especially if you wanted to have to be a driving point for the main character. But nope, they did it and of course she was the one who unfortunately killed him. So God, what a great, great episode this was and I didn't necessarily tease or imply there was going to be a third season but because this is such a great prequel story to the first two seasons of Kingdom especially with the way the most recent and second season of Kingdom ended definitely left the door open for more stories so hopefully sooner rather than later we will get a third season renewal or confirmation in the near future. We just gotta be patient. So, what did you guys think of Kingdom Ashen of the North? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you expecting more, expecting less? Were you satisfied with the amount of zombie action that there was? I was. I really enjoyed the zombie action scenes that we got. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Have an awesome rest of your day, and stay tuned to this channel for later today for further updates as the Comic-Con at Home event has started today and goes on all weekend. We're going to be getting a lot of news, announcements, and hopefully trailers and premiere dates for tons of upcoming uh, mostly television franchises and maybe a few movies. We just won't know until we know. So stay tuned for those updates. Have an awesome rest of your day, everybody. Thanks for watching. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.